This is the Doomsday Vault. It's deep beneath the North Pole and it is uh, housing three million seed samples in case of climate change, an asteroid strike or some other calamitous event. Coming up on the next slide, I have a, another deep tunnel underneath a mountain in Switzerland. This houses the nuclear waste that comes out of the reactors from Switzerland's five nuclear reactors, deep underground under the mountain. Coming up on the third slide, this is my personal favourite, is the Swiss DNA Bank. And this is a company which online, with your credit card, you can purchase a spot underneath the mountain where you can store your personal belongings, your favourite music and your DNA. They will send you a swab kit, you can give them your DNA, send it off and they'll keep it for future generations under this mountain. The Swiss DNA, I don't know which mountain it is. But the reason I show you those three is because they're the three essential parts of any legacy that we leave behind. We leave seeds that we hope will grow and blossom in the future. We have waste that we leave behind, toxic waste that no one knows what to do with, and the things we love. We leave our DNA behind, infused in our relationships and in, within actual people, within our children. So what is legacy? It's what we leave behind. It's the thing that we leave behind that makes an impact on people and within environments that we move about in when we're here. And it's a nice little symbol, our legacy, six billion legacies going on all at one time. Now, legacy is something that people only normally think about in terms of dying or retirement. Legacy, what am I going to leave behind when I get to that stage? But if you think of legacy as a process rather than an outcome, it can be a very powerful way to shift things within your life, a powerful force for change. If one is to look at, well, what do I want my legacy to be? What do I want to leave behind when I'm gone? And look, then look at what I am leaving behind that gap becomes something that calls us into action, something that calls us forth and can be a powerful force for change within our lives. Looking at one's legacy is an incredibly powerful way to get clear on what your priorities are. What is it that I value? For people who are lacking purpose, Gen Y, people who are lacking meaning in their lives, looking at what it is you want to leave behind can be a very powerful way to get clear on what is the meaning of my life, what do I want the meaning of my life to be about. Now, legacy ultimately is the total uh, sorry, is the total contribution that we make, the positive and the negative. In all these different worlds, a legacy is the sum total of all those different contributions that we make in the different communities and the different relationships we have. Legacy is a story. It's made up. It exists in ideas and in the thoughts of the people that we move in amongst. And so if we want to start to look at, well, what is my legacy? I need to look at, well, what's my story? What is the story of my life? And there are three very, very good ways to start to look at, well, what is my story? This guy, Rob Lucci, has a great blog, Your Legacy Smile, and he talks about telling, collecting, and creating one's story. And we have amazing technologies at our disposal with which to go about telling, collecting, and creating our stories. I encourage you to use some of them. If you were to die on Tuesday, what would be your obituary? In the newspaper, what would be the, the facts, the achievements? What would they say, Simon achieved this? And what would be the eulogy? Who'd be up there hopefully crying? talking about the emotional impact that I've made. It's a powerful exercise to do for yourself. Tell your story through interview. Interview is an amazing structure with which to connect to your story. Write questions, write the answers. Use your iPhone to record question and answer, your thoughts, memories that come back. Interview yourself in the mirror with a video camera. It's weird, but it's <laughs> effective. Collecting your story. The legacy that you've adopted has come through your ancestry. Your legacy will be passed on into your family. There is incredible freedom in realizing that most of your fuck-ups, in fact, borrowed and handed down to you through the ages. <laughs> Find out about your family history and what an amazing gift to pass on, your family history. Look at the turning points in your life. Write them down. Make a mind map. What are the key moments? Are there patterns? What are the themes? What does my life mean? Now, creating your story... An amazing way to start to create your story is to do the obituary eulogy exercise, but project it out. Instead of it being right now, 25 years, 30 years, 50 years from now, what are they going to say? What is the newspaper going to say? What is my wife going to say? Another important part of creating your story, open your eyes. What is the toxic waste you've left behind in your life already? What are the relationships and your finances and the other parts of your life where there's toxic waste? Clean it up so that there's freedom to create and to actually put out what your legacy is going to be. And to me, most importantly, reach out. When I'm clear on what my pr passions are and what legacy I want to leave, connect to communities of people who are aligned with those passions, with those ideals, and contribute. Remember, your legacy is the sum total of the contribution that you're making. Connect, reach out, blog on the things that you're passionate about, speak at events like this, 
meet people who are aligned with what you're about and what you want your legacy to be. And remember, because a legacy is a story, you get to choose the ending. It's yours to write, it's yours to create, and I encourage you to do so.